Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Metal. In this tutorial, we're going to do a full overview of Mantra VR. Mantra VR is a comprehensive set of stylization effects designed to take your cinematic 360 VR production to the next level. The effects are built to work on spherical footage in After Effects and in Premiere Pro, and they were created by the same developers at Metal who created the Skybox 360 VR plugins. So go ahead and get relaxed and get your popcorn ready because we're going to be diving deep into all the settings of Mantra VR. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. Alright guys, one of the first things we can do in order to see all the Mantra effects very quickly in After Effects is just come over to the Effects panel and type in Mantra. And that'll quickly toggle all the different Mantra VR effects that are included. But Mantra VR also includes a few VR tools that are really going to help you when you're designing your 360 content. And the first one I want to show you is the Globe Preview. And the way you get to that is you go up to the window, and you're going to see this tab that says Extensions, and then you're going to see Metal Globe Preview. That's going to immediately toggle the preview, and you can see if we go ahead and click on our equirectangular composition, it'll update this globe preview with our composition. And you can actually click on the globe and navigate around it to see your entire 360 image. So this is a cool perspective that we can use to look at our 360 footage and kind of examine things, make sure we don't have any issues with the poles, and just quickly navigate around your 360 footage. Now you also notice a cube map that's unfolded up here, and we have the front face. We can actually click that. And it's immediately going to update to the front of our 360 footage. And you can actually click on the right side and it'll update to the right or the top and then the bottom, any of the sides that you want to quickly get to. Another feature that's included is actually these longitude and latitude lines, kind of the horizon lines you can turn on. You can see uh, where at and the degrees of your video, the different pole points. So it makes it really easy to navigate and check horizon lines, that kind of thing. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off. You can also roll your mouse to zoom in and out of this 360 globe. But my favorite feature of the globe preview is actually if you double click on the globe, we're immediately going to be immersed inside of the sphere and then we can navigate around just like we would a 360 POV, like the viewer is going to be viewing back the 360 video. And of course you can resize this window to accommodate your needs, put it on another monitor, but what I like to do is actually it is dockable. So I'm just going to dock it right over here on the right hand side and double click to zoom back out and that way I have a constant global preview of everything I'm working on in After Effects. Now the next major VR tool that's included with Mantra VR is actually the Mantra VR panel. So I'm going to come here and select the Mantra VR effect and apply it to this 360 footage. I'm just going to quickly show you this panel. We're going to come back to it a little bit later in the video. But once you apply the Mantra VR effect, you'll see toggle panel over here in the effects panel. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And that will launch the Mantra VR panel. And you can see this is a node panel. We can add in effects. We can add in controls. We can also browse presets, reset, and delete everything that's in the panel. Again, we're going to come back and check out this panel a little bit later in the tutorial after we look at some of the effects. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. So let's go ahead and look at the first Mantra effect in our list over here, and that is the Chrome Spears effects. So I'm just going to drag that onto my 360 footage. And you can see we now have a chrome sphere on our footage and it's reflecting everything in the environment. So let's navigate over here to the effect settings. The first option is the frame layout. I believe all the effects in Mantra have this setting where you can select between monoscopic and stereoscopic footage. Next we have the point of interest when we actually move the sphere around our 360 video. You can also click and drag the sphere anywhere in the shot. So this is really nice, convenient, easy way you can place it uh, anywhere throughout the shot. And as you can see, the reflections do update depending on where the chrome sphere is in the scene. The next setting we have is the field of view, which essentially controls the size of the sphere. So I can go ahead and adjust this and it will resize the sphere depending on what your needs are. Next, we have the curvature of the sphere. So I'm actually going to move this here in the center. And you can see if I go ahead and adjust this, if I move it up, it kind of curves the sphere more outward and kind of gives it this liquidy-like effect. You can see... I can move it around here and you can see it just kind of really exaggerates the curvature. <clears throat> and I can also bring this back down and it's going to actually kind of warp inward. So it looks like an inward warp kind of pulling everything from the video toward it. I'll go ahead and set that back to zero at the default. The recursion level, we're going to come back to that in just a second. Next we have the feather. We can adjust the feathering around the sphere. You can see you can make it blend or have a hard edge there. Next we have the draw background effect and it's on by default so we can still see the background. If you don't want to see the background you can actually turn that off. And now we're only seeing the sphere. So you would have it floating out here in space or something like that. But let me show you a quick little trick you could do with the draw background feature turned off. So I'm actually going to select my footage down here. 
I'm gonna hit Control D or Command D on a Mac to duplicate it. And on that bottom copy, I'm actually gonna delete the Chrome Spheres effect. So now we can see that background has appeared. And I'm just gonna come up here to Effect and apply Metal Skybox Blur on that background layer. I'll go ahead and increase the blur. And you can see this kind of emulates a shallow depth of field look now with that chrome sphere being in the front, but it's actually reflecting you know, the same background. So I can actually move it around the scene. And again, you get this nice kind of shallow depth of field look. So that would be one use case for having that draw background feature turned off. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and delete that second copy we created. And on our original copy, I'm gonna turn the background back on. Finally, we have the opacity right here. Obviously, I can just adjust the opacity of the sphere. However, one of the features that really gives Montre VR a lot of versatility is this distribution options down here. And quite a few of the effects have this. I'll go ahead and toggle this down. You can see all the other settings that are included under the distribution options. First is the distribution type. And by default, for most of the effects, it's on Fibonacci. And that's just the mathematical sequence that's involved with the number of instances we actually add to this shot. Uh, it sounds complicated. But let me just go ahead and increase the number of instances so you can see here. So I'm just gonna drag this up. You can see I'm adding more and more chrome spheres to the shot. And what's really impressive with the chrome spheres effect is that all the other spheres that we created are actually reflected in each other. So you can see kind of this inception look. And to go along with that, let's go back up to the recursion level setting. And now if I go ahead and increase that to two, you're gonna see even more of the spheres have been reflected in each other. And we can even increase this all the way up to three and we get even more reflections. So I'm really zoomed in here at 400%. You can just see how many reflections we have there you won't need any more than three because it actually wouldn't be visible after three recursions there. However, if you want to take it all the way down to zero, you can do that as well. So now we just have the chrome spheres and they aren't reflecting each other. Next, we have the latitude option. What's nice about this, if I bring it to one side, you'll see it's going to actually move all the spheres around the point of interest right there. So that's when it's all the way at 100. If I move it all the way to negative 100, they're all going to move to the exact polar opposite point of the 360 video. So it's a cool way you can animate things in Mantra. I'll set that back to the default of zero. Next we have rotate around the point of interest. So there's our point of interest again. And I can just go ahead and toggle this and you can see how all the spheres will rotate around the point of interest. We also have incremental scale, which I'm gonna adjust this. It'll change the scaling of all the spheres based off where the point of interest is. If I go all the way up to 100, the spheres closest to the point of interest get tiny and then the ones on the polar opposite are still large. And then we can actually reverse that in the other direction so that the spheres are larger on this side and smaller on the opposite side. And next we have random scale deviation, which is randomly adjusts the size of the spheres. And we have random position deviation, which is randomizes the positions. And then finally we have random seed, which pretty obviously randomizes everything. However, I'm gonna come back up here and show you some more of the distribution types. So I'm actually gonna reset the effect. And I'm gonna increase the instances here to about 12. So I have 12 different chrome spheres here. I'm going to change the distribution type to circle. And by default, this may look a little strange, but we actually do have a circle of the spheres. It's just going from top to bottom here, kind of around our scene. I'm going to adjust the actual field of view of the spheres so you can see that a little bit easier. If I actually navigate to the global preview, you can see that the spheres are just wrapping around from the top pole to the bottom pole. If I double click in here so we can go in and see, now we can kind of see what's happening. So what I actually want to do is have them wrap around the sphere, kind of around the horizon line. So in order to do that, I'm going to find the point of interest. I'm just going to move that down to the very bottom. And now we can kind of see what's happening with the spheres are wrapping around the entire 360 footage. And now we can see that over here in the global preview as well. And we can also animate this, you know, again, rotating around the point of interest, which would rotate the spheres and work with the incremental scale and do other options like that. All right, so that's the Chrome Spheres effect. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Now let's take a look at the Circular Waves effect. I'm just gonna drag that on my 360 footage. And now we get this kind of like water ripple waves on our 360, and it starts at the center of one pole and goes all the way to the back of the footage. Again, this is a seamless effect, which is what makes it so powerful. We can look at this again on the global preview there to kind of get a better idea of what's happening. So let's come over here to the settings and the frame layout again is the same. And again, we have the point of interest where we can select where we want the start of that to occur. And you can keyframe this, animate it, move it around your 360 footage. I'll move it back to the center. We can control the amplitude, which again is really kind of how tall each of those ripples are and kind of how contrasty they are with this particular shot. You can see when you increase it quite a bit, it looks more like a liquid chrome type effect. 
and you can really see it over here in the global preview. Next we have the actual wave length. So if we want the waves to actually be bigger, we can increase that. And you can see they're getting quite a bit bigger. Next we have the phase, which will actually phase the waves over our 360 footage. You can see they're coming from the front and then going to the back back here. Our next option is the decay. You can adjust how much of the 360 footage is being affected by the circular waves. You can see this would be a really cool option to keyframe and animate on your 360 footage. We also have the max latitude, which when worked with the decay, you can kind of keyframe where you want the waves to start from. And so you can start them from like a center point and have them develop outward or start them in a particular pole area, that kind of thing. Well, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and reset this to show you the displacement. So the displacement essentially kind of adds a little bit of a twirl to the circular waves. You can see what happens when I increase that either to the positive or the negative side. And again, on the circular waves effect, we have all those distribution options down here, like I showed you with the chrome spheres effect. I won't go through all of these again like I did with that one, but again, you can always increase the number of instances and get some really cool results. And also rotate around the point of interest. You can see it's kind of like a glass kaleidoscope effect. And we can see what that looks like over here on the global preview. So quite powerful, especially when you combine all of the distribution options and even combine it with other mantra effects. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that effect. Let's take a look at the Escher Droste effect. I'm gonna drag that onto my 360 footage. And immediately you see kind of this infinite twirl happening on our footage. And you can animate the zoom loop over here it's kind of like an infinite zoom that's seamless. But again, we have the frame layout. We have a position of interest so we can reposition where we want the twirl to originate from. We have zoom factor and zoom cutoff we can actually adjust. These are pretty sensitive, but you can control kind of some fine tune settings. You can see right there, it looks really cool. You just zoom in there, you can see it's really like a tunnel effect happening. And again, we've already seen the zoom loop a little bit here, just the infinite kind of zooming forward and backwards. You can turn on and off the twist option there if you just want it to be a circle or if you want to twist. I'm gonna leave it on the circle for now. We also have the feathers. So you can adjust the feathering around the edges. So if you really wanna blend a shot together to kind of create that infinite zoom effect, you'll definitely wanna adjust the feather. However, I'm actually gonna bring the feather all the way back down to zero. I'm going to turn the twist back on because I want to show you this interpolate option here. So currently it's at 100. And this is a really cool effect that you're going to want to keyframe. So watch what happens as I drag this down from 100 to 0. You're going to see it's going to conform right back to the original state of the 360 video. So this is really cool when you want to bring your abstract effects back down to earth and kind of give the viewer a little bit of ground base of what they're seeing. And particularly if you have a client that wants some abstract effects but eventually wants to see the actual environment in 360. We'll definitely want to use the interpolate option there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that effect. Now let's take a look at the Mantra VR graphics effect. For that, I'm gonna come over here to another composition. I'm gonna come here and select the graphics effect and apply it to my 360 footage. Now what's interesting about the Mantra VR graphics effect, it kind of works in the same way as Project 2D. It's just you're gonna get all those distribution options that you can use that are part of Mantra to use on any layer you're projecting in 360. So let me just go ahead and demonstrate this really quickly. So I've got this Mantra VR logo. I'll just turn it on in this composition. If I come back to my original footage that I applied Mantra VR graphics to, you're going to see up here we have an option for projected layer. And so what you're going to want to do is select the layer in your composition you want to project. So I'm going to select Mantra VR logo. And when I do that, you're going to see a second copy of the logo appears actually behind this original logo that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So now we can see the Mantra VR logo is being projected correctly in 360. And I can adjust the size of it with a field of view here. And if I jump over here to the global preview, we're going to see that that actually is flat, being projected correctly in 360. So that's really nice. What's also great about the graphics effects, you can actually move your logo or whatever image you're projecting in 360 around using the point of interest tool. So I can just click and drag wherever I want this logo to appear on my footage. I know this was highly requested by a lot of people using the Project 2D effect. And this definitely makes it a lot more convenient when you're trying to adjust something and put it something exactly in a certain space in 360. The next option we have is the feather option. So if this logo actually extended all the way to the edge here, we could adjust the feathering of that. In this case, we can't really see that. 
However, we can adjust the opacity of it, so I can just drag this down. You can see the logo will disappear, fade in and out. Next, we have the tilt, pan, and roll for the actual logo itself. It's kind of like in 3D here, like a flat layer. We can rotate that around if we want to. I'm going to set these back to zero at the default. But as I mentioned, we have these same distribution options, so I can toggle this down, and I can increase the number of instances of the logo, and all of these will be projected back correctly in 360. And so I can also move around the point of interest and they're all going to kind of move around that. I could also have them all rotate around the point of interest. What I really like is adjusting the latitude here. So I bring this up. You're going to see they're all going to conform together and you can kind of keyframe this to like explode out from the logo. And so that's a really cool animation you could do with this effect. Just to further demonstrate this, I'll show you with the mantra box art here. So I'm actually going to select that effect. I'm going to change the projected layer here to be the mantra box. And now we can see the box art here, and I can also keyframe the latitude. Again, kind of creating this cool effect from that. I could also change it to be the circle, and that way we could actually be surrounded by the Mantra VR box art here. I'll go ahead and move the point of interest down. And adjust the scale. Then if I rotate around the point of interest, you can see we get this rotation effect here. And it'll be updated over here in the global preview. We can kind of see what's happening. So it's a really nice option to have to be able to add in your layers and then also take advantage of this distribution options here uh, to really create some cool abstract looks. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the hyperbolix effect here as part of Mantra VR. This one's kind of one of the ones you've probably seen in the previews and really does a cool kaleidoscope effect. So I'm just going to drag and drop that on my footage. And immediately you're going to see some really abstract looking results. We have the frame layout options again. We also have the hyperbolic tile we can select from all these different presets here. I like looking at some of the kaleidoscope presets for some of the results that they give. Of course, we have the point of interest we can go ahead and adjust from. We can also adjust rotating around the point of interest to create some cool animations. Really this effect, you can just come in here and just toggle any of the settings, get some really cool results. Have the zoom, we have evolution here. You can see how that kind of creates a cool animation, really creating more and more instances of this effect. So it can get pretty deep pretty quickly. And then you also have evolution two, which does a similar type function. But again, this is really cool because this is all seamless in 360. If we come over here to the global preview, we can jump inside of the sphere and look around. And of course, we can keyframe all of these to create some really cool abstract animations. I like adjusting the tilt, pan, and roll. And you can see all the crazy results you get from this effect. What I also really like is that we have the interpolate option down here. So once you've shown your client this really abstract scene and they don't know what they're looking at, you can then keyframe this down and bring them back into the real world to the actual 360 shot. So, so you can see the power that you could use with this with transitions and all kinds of different animation options. All right, I've jumped over to another scene. Let's take a look at the magnifying glass effect. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this on my 360 footage. And the magnifying glass effect is really cool because you can kind of create a zoom or a pop out window uh, very quickly on your 360 footage. And so we'll just come over here and look and I've got the point of interest. I'll just position this somewhere in my shot. And I'm gonna adjust the magnification level and you're gonna see that we can actually zoom in and kind of magnify whatever area is below this circle essentially emulating a magnifying glass on our 360 footage. But because 360 footage is so wide, you're essentially looking at the footage from a very wide angle lens. It's hard to get close up and see fine details on things, especially right now, because of a lot of players are limited with resolution to 4K. You're not gonna see a lot of that closer detail even if you're recording in 8K or even higher than that. So using the magnifying glass effect, we can zoom in here and look at some of these finer details of our footage. And again, you can adjust the field of view to determine the size of the magnified area. And then again, we can adjust the magnification level. The recursion option, I'll show you when we get down here to the distribution, what that's doing. We can also adjust the feather on the circle there. Again, we also have the draw background feature if we want to enable or disable that. One cool thing about this is this actually looks like we're in like a nighttime scene. If I go ahead and increase the feather, and it's almost like we're shining a flashlight around this 360 shot. So that's kind of a cool, unique thing you could use this effect for. I'm going to go ahead and turn the background back on, and I'm going to bring the feather back down. And finally, we have the opacity again, just to adjust the opacity of the magnified area 
which is a really quick and easy way to turn it on and off if you're using it in a 360 video. Now let's go ahead and look at the distribution with the magnifying glass if you really want to create some cool abstract looks. So I'm just going to toggle that down and increase the number of instances here. And as I actually increase the number of instances, you're going to notice something that's happening with the magnifying glass effect. As more and more of these layers overlay each other, you're going to see it's going to continue to magnify one over the other. And if you don't want that to occur, you come here to the recursion, you can turn that off. And so it actually won't continue to magnify each of these layers as they are top of each other. Uh, to kind of demonstrate this a little bit better, I'm going to turn that back on. I'm going to adjust the latitude here to bring all the points to one point. You can see as I do that, you know, really we just get one pixel color because it's being magnified so many times over. But if I go ahead and disable the recursion, you're going to just see a normal magnified view. And then as I animate this back out, you're going to see how they all move out from each other. But they're not continuing to magnify each other with the recursion disabled. So this effect has a lot of practical and abstract uses, so that's pretty unique. All right, so now let's take a look at the Meridian Waves effect. I'm just going to drag and drop that on my 360 footage. And this is similar to the Circular Waves effect. You can see, however, the lines are actually going horizontally from the front to the back. And we have similar options over here, such as the amplitude, the orientation. So you can kind of rotate those around. We have the wave length, so we can adjust how big the waves actually are occurring around the footage. We have the phase. We can kind of add some animated movement to this. Then we have the azimuth decay, so you can control how much is being affected by that effect. And also the altitude decay, which will kind of control where that starts from. So again, if you only wanted to apply this to a limited area like the sky only or something like that. And then we have displacement again here, which will add a little bit more of kind of a wavy texture to the distortion there. And then of course we have the distribution options again down here that you can go ahead and toggle through. However, I'm going to go ahead and reset this effect. One cool thing about Meridian Waves is actually combining it with the circular waves. And so if I stack both these together, you're going to see we get this kind of glassy appearance. So these two effects definitely complement each other. So you'll definitely want to use both of them together on occasion. All right, I'm going to go ahead and delete both of those. And let's take a look at the mirrors effect now. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this onto our 360 footage. So with the mirrors effect, you can kind of think of it as the inversion of the magnifying glass effect that we took a look at. So imagine this being a mirror in our shot. And what we're seeing is actually a reflection of what's over in this area. So if we come over here and look at the options, we have some of the same standard options we've seen before, such as a point of interest where we can move this around our scene. And you can see as I move this around, it's reflecting different things off the mirror. I'm going to skip these two options very briefly here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tilt and the pan. So you can see we can kind of rotate this mirror in 3D space on the tilt and the pan axis. So that's a pretty unique perspective. We also have the feather, of course. We can adjust the feathering of the mirror. I'm going to set these both back to zero. We also have draw background. We can turn that on and off as usual. And we have the opacity here. Now with the perspective camera, essentially what that's pertaining to is when we rotate and pan this mirror around, this mirror is not orthographic by default. So if we actually turn on use perspective camera, it's going to distort the mirror a little bit more like it's an actual 3D object in our scene. You can see as I rotate this around, it's just going to add a little bit more of that kind of optical distortion onto this. You can see how it'll adjust when I turn it on and off. So if you want it to be a little bit more like an actual 3D object, you can turn on Use Perspective Cam. It really just depends on your preferences. And I'm actually going to turn these back to zero again to demonstrate the Auto Orient. So with Auto Orient turned on, if I move this back to the middle, when I move it around with the point of interest, you're going to see it's always facing toward essentially the center of the 360 video. However, if I turn off Auto Orient, you're going to see it's going to rotate as I move it off axis here. So really it's up to you and just how accurate you want to be with the effect and what you're going for. I'm going to go ahead and turn the auto orient back on. And obviously down here with the distribution, we can create even more abstract looks. We can create even more abstract looks with this and do similar things like we could on some of the other effects with the distribution option. I'm going to go ahead and delete the mirrors effect. And I'm going to apply. So what the Mobius raw effect is, it essentially allows you to create your own 360 effects using math. It's going to be based off values of a complex matrix, which has four different values. And if this sounds a little complicated, let me tell you it is. I was relayed this information from Dimitri, the lead engineer at Metal that worked on Mantra VR. So I'm not going to pretend like I know a ton about this effect. It is very complicated, but I'll go ahead and bring up this image here and kind of try to explain it to you the same way he did to me. And essentially, this Mobius Raw effect is composed of four different values that make up this matrix here, a four-value matrix each of which is a complex number, which has a real part and an imaginary part. And so if we come over here and look at this effect, we have A, B, C, and D. 
And so that's the four values of the matrix. And then we have real and imaginary for each one of those effects. And so if you have someone who's a math guru who wants to dial in very specific values with a distortion they want to apply to 360 footage, they can input those values here in each one of these areas. And then that would allow them to get the desired results. However, if you do want to just go ahead and play with this to create your own spontaneous abstract results, you can do that as well. And that's actually what I'm going to be doing with this. So again, you can just create some cool complex looks just by randomly adjusting some of these values. I bet you guys didn't think we'd be looking at math that complicated in this tutorial. And let me tell you, that was well over my head and probably y'all's as well. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the Mobius Raw effect. Now let's look at something I'm a little more familiar with, and that's the Mobius Rotate. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this to my 360 footage. And right off the bat, you're going to see a really cool result, which is the tiny planet look on the 360 footage. And so with Mobius Rotate, essentially what's happening is we have two different points. And the entire 360 equal rectangular footage is going to rotate around these two points. So you can see the angle over here. And I can go ahead and adjust this. And you can see how everything's rotating around those specific two points. And you can get various results depending on the angle. So back at the default, when it's at zero, we have our normal footage. If I rotate it 90 degrees, we get a tiny planet-like effect. And if I rotate it negative 90 degrees, we get kind of that inverted tunnel effect going on. And I'll set this back to 90 so we can kind of relate to this tiny planet look. But again, we can also move these points around. You can keyframe them to get various results. But what's really cool about the tiny planet that we're seeing here, it's not just we're getting a tiny planet, but this is also a seamless 360 view. So if I come over here to the global preview, and I double click in here, you can see we see a tiny planet, but you can also look around the rest of the actual scene. And so we have blue sky back here that's seamless. And then you can come back over here and look at your tiny planet. So it almost looks like we're out here in space looking down on this at a really high altitude. So definitely take advantage of this effect and all the different uses you can get out of it. Again, everything will rotate around these two points. So you could put them anywhere in your shot and then just play with the angle to get various results. All right, I'm going to go ahead and delete the Mobius rotate effect. And let's take a look at the Mobius transform effect. I'm going to apply that to my footage. Now I can already tell you this is going to be one of the most popular and most practically used effects as a part of Mantra VR. And the reason for that is because with this effect, you can create some virtual dolly movements in your 360 video. So if we think about this, we have a 360 globe and our camera essentially exists right in the center of this globe, just like I'm zooming in in the global preview. But it'd be nice if we could actually move the camera around in the 3D space inside of this globe. Well, with the Mobius transform effect, we can essentially emulate that movement. So if I come up here with a zoom factor, we have a zoom in and a zoom out point. We have the zoom in point right here in the center and the zoom out point in the exact opposite pole. So when I adjust the zoom factor here, you're going to see we have movement going on inside of the 360 shot. Now you're going to want to be very subtle with this, you know, probably something like two and then to negative two, just very subtle movement. So go ahead and keyframe that just so we can kind of see what this looks like. So I'll keyframe the zoom there and come down here four seconds or so and do negative two. Again, the more subtle you are with this, the more believable it's going to appear to the client and just essentially make your shots a little more dynamic. So I'll do a quick brand preview of this. And you can see this kind of emulates a nice dolly effect on our 360 footage. I think it's going to be a very popular effect with VR filmmakers. Definitely to make shots that are static, a little more dynamic. And you don't have to worry about a lot of complex roto work happening below the camera. And of course, we can also reorient this around to adjust the pan and the tilt and the roll. If you need to level off your footage. But you can also move the zoom in and out points to different areas of the video to create even more abstract results. using the Mobius transformation effect. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete the Mobius transform effect. And let's take a look at the Mantra VR primitives effect, another very popular effect. So when I apply that to my footage, you can see we get a sphere and this effect is similar to Chrome spheres. Yet we have a lot more options in here to make it a lot more dynamic and customize things. And so the first thing you'll notice up here is we have the frame layout between monoscopic or stereoscopic footage. If you do use stereoscopic footage, you have some options for stereo disparity. So you can actually adjust it where it emulates 3D depth to these objects on a stereo output. Currently, I'm just working with monoscopic footage. Next, we have the object options here. We can select from various primitive objects. I'm actually going to select a cube for this demo just so we can see it a little bit easier. Of course, we have the point of interest. If we want to move this cube around our shot. We also have a distance option here. We can adjust how close or far away the sphere is to our 360 camera. We can toggle on and off auto orient again. We can also tilt, pan, and roll the cube so you can actually see it is a 3D object. And you'll notice right now that the environment map is kind of lighting the cube. And that's what's really cool. The environment map actually is influencing how it looks. We can also adjust the various scales, X, Y, and Z, on our primitive objects. You can see if I increase this, 
It's actually adjusting the cube in 3D space. So you can kind of create some cool custom shapes using that. I'm gonna set those back to the default really quickly. Next, we have a variety of material options down here. So I'm just gonna to toggle this down. You can see we have color. We can even add in a custom texture here. If we wanna go ahead and load one of those in. And we can adjust things such as the reflectivity. If I increase this all the way, you're gonna see we get kind of a chrome looking cube. And I can actually increase the diffusion here and the ambient light and rotate this around. You can see we get like this mirror cube now. However, we can also adjust the color of the cube. So I can change it to something like a teal color. However, we can also adjust the color of the cube. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower the reflectivity down here and influence the color. And then if we actually wanna have a custom environment map reflect off of this cube instead of the one we currently have, we can come down here to environment and you can select another environment map. You can also turn on and off to draw the background. And of course we have the distribution options down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this. We can increase the number of cubes and just do all kinds of customizations to this. Keyframing the latitude and animating everything on the pan, tilt, and roll. So you can definitely see using this for 360 music videos or any other abstract scenes that you may need some primitive objects in. Again, we can take a look at some of the other objects we have here. Quite a bit of customization you can do using this effect. And of course it is stackable, so you could add other mantra effects on top of this one. And really all the effects are stackable, I should also mention that. I'm gonna go ahead and add the Escher Droste effect below this. So now you can see the result we get from that. And again, depending on the layer stack here, we'll give you different results, which is really cool. You can see how the Escher Droste is reflecting off of the cylinders we have there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete both of these effects. And now let's take a look at the repeater effect. I'm gonna drag and drop that on my 360 footage. And this does what its name says, it just repeats seamlessly our 360 footage. So I can repeat this on the x-axis and on the y-axis. The repeater effect is definitely popular to combine with other effects to create abstract looks. So again, I'll just bring in something like the circular waves effect and apply it first. And you can see as I keyframe this, we get this nice kaleidoscope looking effect on our footage. And again, it just depends on the layer stack of where these stack up. I'm actually gonna delete the circular waves effect now so we can look more at the repeater. And you can also check on and off the different mirror options you have here with this effect. And we can go ahead and jump into the global preview here to kind of look around. You can see how it's repeating around the shot. And now let's take a look at the stretcher effect. So I'm just gonna apply that to our footage. And this is a really quick and easy way you can stretch and distort your 360 footage and create kind of tiny plan effects. So you can see right off default, it's kind of stretching everything inward toward the horizon line. And it may be difficult to kind of see what's happening. Let's go ahead and look in the global preview here. I'm actually gonna undock this so we can make this a little bit larger. And so we can look around and you can see, just like we're moving closer to the ground plane, I'm gonna move this out for just a second. And we're gonna take a look now. If I go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees, and if we go ahead and move this downward, it's a quick and easy way we can create that tiny planet effect in 360. So if I bring back up the global preview, and now we look around here. If I look down, you can see it looks like we're much higher up in elevation over our shot. And we kind of have that tiny planet effect occurring down at the bottom of our footage. And you can see that a little bit better here on the preview. But that's one of the nice benefits of the stretcher effect. Again, you can continue to rotate the latitude angle to get various results. And continuing to adjust the strength to determine how much you actually want to see. And again, combining this with other effects will give you good results. So you can see how we kind of animate the kaleidoscope here using the strength or if I move it below, we can just add other distortions to the hyperbolics effect. All right, so now let's take a quick look at one of my favorite effects, which is the turbulence effect. I'm gonna apply it to my footage, and this essentially is liquid simulation in 360 that is seamless, which sounds pretty complicated, and the results are pretty stunning. So 
Again, we have the frame layout. We also have the progress here, which is the actual progress of the fluid simulation. I'm gonna go ahead and increase this. And you can see what a result we're getting, how it's essentially blending all the colors together. I'm gonna to zoom in here so we can see some of these really fine details that are occurring, all these little twists with the color. I'm gonna bring this back up a little bit. That's just really cool looking. We can go ahead and dive into the global preview here, look around this in 360. Now one thing to note about the turbulence effect, it actually works best on still images because this liquid simulation will be very fluid. However, when it's on video, it's continuing to update frame by frame. So you may get a little bit of sporadic movements with the fluid simulation as it flows. However, we can continue to adjust some of these other options like the velocity here. If I bring this back down, we're gonna get a little more of a smoother result. As you can see here, and we also have the turbulence, which is just gonna adjust the overall turbulence of everything that's happening with the fluid simulation. As I bring it lower, you can see everything looks a little bit smoother. Then we have the vorticity that we can check on or off, which gets rid of some of the small twists. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the turbulence back up here so we can see what the vorticity is doing. So you can see all these little micro twists that we have. When I turn the vorticity off, you can see it kind of smooths out everything, kind of like a thicker fluid. However, let me go ahead and reset this effect. Let me show you what the density map option does. So you'll see we have this option here where we can select a density map in our shot. And I went ahead and created one in advance of this tutorial to show you. So I'll just turn this on to show you what this looks like. So this is just a black solid with a white circle in the center. And wherever it's white is where the density is going to be affected first on the turbulence effect. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And we'll select my force 360 footage. And for density map, I'm going to select my density map composition. And so remember that white circle is right here in the center. So let me show you what happens when I go ahead and increase the progress here. You can see that the fluid simulation starts right there where the white density circle was. And so as it draws everything kind of toward that circle, and you can see you can get some really cool abstract results with this. And just a little bit more of a way you can control the fluid simulation if you have your own density map, that kind of thing. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the final effect in the effects panel list here, and that is the Mantra VR twirl. So I'm just gonna apply this to my footage, and it pretty much does what the name says. We're gonna just twirl this footage around. We have a point of interest we can select here. We can also move it around, and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the strength of the twirl. You can see it's just twisting and twirling our 360 footage. And then we can adjust the fixed latitude here, which will essentially rotate the twirl. And then we can check this out from the global preview, which looks really neat. And we can jump into the shot here. Pretty nice perspective. And of course, we can keyframe the twirl strength. If we want to go ahead and keyframe that back down to zero, which will add some cool animation to our shot if we want to actually keyframe the twirl. All right, guys, hopefully you're still with me in this tutorial. As promised, let's go back and let's take a look at the Mantra VR panel now. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the Mantra VR effect and apply it to my 360 footage. And again, we can see all the different options over here. Again, we can toggle the panel, select between monoscopic or stereoscopic footage. We have a master controller here we'll take a look at. And we also have audio reactivity we'll take a look at as well. So first, let's go ahead and look at the panel. So I'm just gonna toggle the panel open here. So now we can see the Mantra VR panel. And again, we have the effects, the controls, and we have presets over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select one of these presets. I'll select bubbles. And I'm gonna go ahead and move the panel out of the way for a second. We're just gonna move down the timeline here to kind of see what's happening on our footage. Now we can see all these bubbles that are appearing on the shot, kind of like ripples, like water ripples there. And you can see we have various expressions that are linked up over here and we can actually look in the panel. We can see we have the magnifying glass linked up to this field of view with a node controller there. So that's giving us an idea of what's happening. I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete this preset. Let's go ahead and look at one of the other presets here. Let's select Escher Drost Day number two. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. You can see we have this really nice Extra draw stay effect that's combined with the repeater. If I bring this here, you can see we have Mobius rotate, repeater, two different instances of that. We have extra draw stay and a Mobius transformation. This is a pretty complex preset. You can see the awesome result we're getting as this twists inward and is seamless. Let's go ahead and look at the global preview. So again, just really wicked looking results. I'll bring back up the panel. Again, if we want to delete this, all we have to do is click on the trash can and that deletes it. So let's go ahead and try to create an effect on our own in the Mantra VR panel. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to come over to effects and look at whatever effects I want to apply. So in this case, I'm actually going to apply the circular waves effect. 
So I'm just gonna click it and you're gonna see it's applied here in the panel, but you may also notice it's also been applied over here in the effects controls panel. This is really convenient because a lot of changes we make over here in our VR panel will be updated immediately in the effects panel in After Effects. So let's go ahead and add in another effect here. Let's add in the Meridian Waves effect. And what's cool about this being a node setup, actually whatever order they're in in the VR panel will actually determine their order over here in the controls panel. So you can see we have circular waves above and meridian waves and we have circular waves here. So let's just say I went ahead and moved this below. You're going to see it's automatically going to update over here in our effects panel and it moves meridian waves above circular waves. So now let's go ahead and add in a controller and I'm going to add in a slider controller. So I'm just going to click on the slider controller. We can see that's been added to our panel. And I want to link this slider controller to the amplitude of the meridian waves, but also the amplitude of the circular waves. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this little circle here. I'm going to link this up to meridian waves. And just holding on the mouse, you're going to see we have all these other options that are highlighted in white that we can connect this to. And again, I said I wanted to connect this to the amplitude, so I'm just going to release the mouse there. And you can see those two have been linked. And if I want to link this slider control to circular waves, I just need to click on that circle again and drag and select the amplitude again over on this one. So now I'm controlling the amplitude of meridian waves and circular waves with this one slider controller. So I'm just going to move this off to the side for a second so we can actually see our composition. And you can see these have been linked via expressions over here in our effects controls panel. So if I go ahead and increase the slider controller just a little bit, you're going to see that both these effects are being applied at the same time. And we're getting that kind of glass looking result on our 360 footage. However, we continue to move this on even further. So I'm going to come over here to controls. And now I'm going to add in an angle control. And let's say I wanted to control the phase of the meridian waves and the circular waves at the same time with this angle controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the angle controller and I'm going to link it up to the meridian waves and I'm going to link it to the phase. And I'm going to do the same thing with the circular waves. So now I can actually control the phase from both of these effects using the single angle controller. You can see how that updates in our composition. Now let's say I wanted to apply an expression to this angle controller that would control both of these effects. We can do that as well. You'll see this little icon down here. You can click it. And you're going to see edit expression and enable expression. So I can just type in my expression here and it'll automatically add it over here in our After Effects composition and in our effects panel. So in this case, I'm just going to type in time and then times by holding shift and pressing eight. And then I'm going to type in 1000. And in order to enable this, I'm going to turn on enable expression and click save. And now let's come over here to our composition. We're just going to move this out of the way really quickly. And let's do a quick RAM preview of this. And now we can see the phase is actually animating because of that expression. It's animating it for both of those effects. Now this looks a little bit intense, so let's come back over here. And pull back up the VR panel. If I need to adjust this, I just select this icon here for the expressions. I'm going to dial this down to something like 400. And click Save. Move this back out of the way and RAM preview again. And there we go. We can see it's a little easier to look at. I can bring it back in the panel, and let's say I wanted to disable that expression for whatever reason. I could just come here to enable expression, check that off, click save, and now that's been disabled. So I'll bring the panel back over here, and let's say I want to turn that back on, and I'll just turn it back on. Let's go ahead and look at another controller we can use. So I'll come here to the controllers, and I'm going to use a point controller now. So let's say I wanted to control the center point for each of these effects with this same point controller. You can see this point right here kind of emulates what we see here in our equirectangular composition. So I'm going to link this up to the meridian waves point of interest and then link this up also to the circular waves point of interest. And as I click and drag this around, you're going to see in the composition it's going to update live, which is really cool. But what makes this really powerful is adding an expression onto this. So I'm just going to click on the expression icon there and I'm going to type in a wiggle expression. So wiggle, and I'll have this wiggle three times 300 pixels per second. Do parentheses three comma 300, close parentheses. I'm gonna enable the expression and click save. And now let's go ahead and do a RAM preview of this. So now you can see we're getting that wiggle expression applied to both the meridian waves and the circular waves effect at the same time. And if we come over here and look, you can see all this red over here indicating that those are linked by expressions. And so you can imagine having to set this up over here in the effects controls panel and diving into all these other effects. That would take quite a bit of time. However, using the Mantra VR panel, this speeds up that process immensely. And again, you can combine this with all the various Mantra effects. If I wanted to, I could add in an extra Droste effect in here and just pull this down. And I can go ahead and link the point control 
up to the extra gross day effect, and that's also going to be affected now by that expression. So you can see you can easily create some one-of-a-kind looks using all these tools you have available in this set. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can do with the Mantra VR panel and some of the various use cases. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the panel up here. What's also cool about the Mantra VR panel though is we can actually add in other effects directly underneath it just by clicking and dragging from the After Effects Effects and Presets panel. So I'm just gonna pull in the extra drove stay effect and add it underneath Mantra VR. And what's ever underneath it actually can be controlled still by this Mantra VR layer. So you can see we have the master controller here. And if I just drag this down, you're gonna see it's gonna act like an interpolation effect. So you can see how that interpolated between the two. So that's an easy way you can go between various effects using just one master controller. And I don't even have to link anything up as long as it's underneath it here in the effects stack, that will work. So just to demonstrate, I'll even bring in a hyperbolic effect, add that underneath. And again, I can still use the master controller here and pull that back down to control all the effects at once. I'm gonna quickly go ahead and delete both of those effects. Now, finally, as I mentioned, we also have this option of audio reactivity, which will actually control the Mantra VFX based off the audio that you have in your composition. So let me go ahead and toggle this down and you're gonna see some of the options we have here. So the first is we need to select our audio layer. So in this composition, I actually have a music track and so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select my audio layer, which is my music track. Then we can select what we want this to affect on our master VR layer. If I toggle this, we have bass, low mid-range, mid-range, and upper mid-range. I just for the time being, I'm going to select low mid-range. And so if we go over here, we'll also see those same options available here. And I can toggle them down and adjust the frequency of it and the hertz of everything. And a few other options such as denoiser, amplifier, and low output. And again, based off the music, this will have a direct effect on the master control setting up here for Mantra VR. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one of the effects underneath this just so we can kind of see what's happening. I'm gonna select the circular waves effect, just drag and drop it underneath. And now if I immediately just go ahead and RAM preview my footage, we're gonna see how the audio is gonna actually react to the master controller. And you can see how the music beat was actually affecting, again, the master controller, which kind of controls the waves we're seeing from the circular waves effect. And again, you can really fine tune this with these other options under here, as well as fine tune your effects that are underneath here for the looks you're going for. So I can adjust the wave size here to get a totally different look when I go ahead and ramp preview this. And if you want to have even more music control over various settings, you can always toggle the VR panel and you actually have some music controls in here and you can link those controls specifically up to various things with your effects. So such as the phase or something like that. And we'll just go over here and just see what this looks like. And you can see it's giving us a little bit different results. So you could definitely get really complicated and create some really custom looks using all these various effects with the audio combined with various settings with Mantra VR. Again, there's a lot of different options you can use the audio effects for and what you want to influence on the various Mantra effects. I just kind of scratched the surface of those options in this long overview, but short demo of the audio effects. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this long overview of the Mantra VR effects. Make sure you check out some of the other individual videos about various Mantra VR effects that Metal will be releasing in the future if you want to see a few other options that might dive a little deeper into each of the effects. All right, guys, it's been Charles Jager from Metal. Thanks for watching.